The grading rubric is an assessment planning tool that lies with the teacher, but it can become an interesting part of the content of class activities. In fact, when the teacher presents the grading rubric to the students, they can use this moment to properly explain the criteria and indicators of a good performance. For example, let's suppose I am asking my students to produce a project, explaining them what the criteria I will use to evaluate them and the indicators of a good performance. It will mean building a process that reinforces their specific abilities and skills, providing key messages on which a good performance is expected. It is important to not limit ourselves to merely presenting the grading rubrics related to the key works that the teacher will propose along the way, but actively involving students in the construction of these rubrics. This method radically changes the set of the classroom because it puts students in an active position towards a process that they normally consider passive. Students generally see their assessment as a context within which they act passively, trying to meet expectations of the teachers that are often not clear to them. When the teacher asks students to put together a grading rubric, they stimulate their thoughts towards the intended performance, their critical sense and their ability to synthesize the most significant elements. Additionally, it involves them and activates them towards the assessment process, giving them a better perception, especially in terms of clarity and fairness. It is a matter of devoting some time in class to activate small group tasks that can also be carried out in very large classes. Students can be asked to divide into small groups to determine around four or five significant criteria and any key indicators. It is usually easier for students to work on criteria rather than indicators. So the first step might be to ask them to work in groups to identify basic criteria. Afterwards, the teacher can ask the groups to present the results of the work, the criteria that they have identified, and any other groups to report similarities and differences compared to the criteria identified by the first group. From the collective discussion, the teacher can guide the development of the rubric in terms of criteria and then collectively guide the indicators. Investing time in class to collaboratively create rubrics can seem a little bit demanding, but the results can be most gratifying. First of all, the collaborative construction in small groups and then the collective discussion about the grading rubrics will help students understand and correctly internalize the appropriate practices for the development of the task assigned. Secondly, it will also help the development of transversal competencies, in particular, the one tied to critical thinking and the ability to self-analyze. If the student has fully understood what the intended performance is, I will be able to activate a process of self-monitoring that allows me to assess whether I'm going in the right direction or not. Of course, it is also an element of a more active involvement in the course. The student won't perceive the evaluation moment as something foreign that at a certain point will determine an arrival point that might not even be very clear along the teaching learning process, but he will feel like a more active participant. Naturally, 
it leads to a better understanding of assessment dynamics, but it can be a great use in the acquisition of specific knowledge. Sharing the grading rubrics can become the time when the teacher underlines the specific knowledge or skills that are necessary to the proper development of the intended performance. Another interesting strategy to have an active role of students is peer assessment. Many years ago already, Weaver and Cottrell underlined the fact that peer assessment encourages involvement, allowing to fully understand what the competencies that students are expected to develop. Peer assessment is the time when students are called to deploy their knowledge, abilities and competencies, but also critical thinking and the ability to assess what they achieved corresponds to the intended performance. This can be naturally done during meetings, but also through the analysis of single works, perhaps even anonymized if the students hesitate a little bit in the assessment of their peers. It can even be a part of the evaluation process itself. Peer assessment strategies have come back to the forefront thanks also to the development of the massive open online courses. In these huge online courses that can be attended by hundreds, if not thousands, of students, the fact of activating peer assessment can make the whole process more sustainable, even on the side of instructors. In order to achieve the FANA certificate, students are required to not only present their work, but also to present a certain number of evaluations of projects carried out by peers. In these assessment and feedback processes, the whole world of artificial intelligence is making very interesting and fast steps ahead in terms of the ability to automatically or semi-automatically manage the assessment of works and the construction of appropriate feedback also integrating the human contribution of peers and instructors. Let's summarize the main points. In the process of evaluation, the students are no longer a passive entity. It can be extremely interesting to involve them. One strategy to involve students is to activate them in the collaborative creation of grading rubrics, building together their criteria and indicators that will be used to grade the performances that the educator will encourage, so as to make them better understood and more internalized during the activities. It can also be very interesting to encourage peer assessment that can become an element in the final assessment. Mm -hmm.